Ramsey. One of my mentors, Dave Ramsey, said, forget about the FICO score, forget about all of that, but then he's rich. And he lives in Nashville, Tennessee. So I have to talk about the FICO score because I need to build it because little people like me, the FICO score is important. So I thank and I praise God for the wisdom and knowledge that we have in this room. This room has people like Bobby Williams, who was a tax consultant. So when you get your taxes done and you're not really sure about how to handle that business properly, go see Bobby Williams. This is expertise here. So I'd like to start a movement in Second Baptist Church. I'd say it's in the house. What you need is in the house. But if pastor doesn't know about it, if I can't help you with the economic development to help launch your business and to make sure that it's legitimate, then we can't really help those that are in the house and then go out and help those in the community. So as of this day forward, we're going to talk about all of the businesses that are in this room. Say hello. We have Steve Darden, who is leadership in Pasadena, leading teens in Pasadena and also leading and growing the teens here at Second Baptist Church. He needs help, y'all. Some of you guys have some skills and talents that he can use for the next generation. So as of this day, I just ask you to be open, keep your minds open as we go down the journey of money and business management. Okay, so we have a presentation right here. My material comes to me from financial beginnings. I partner with Cal CPA. I also partner with Southern California Edison's Federal Credit Union doing the Mad City Money where I go into high schools and they sometimes come here to teach the young adults how to handle money. How many people, just by a show of hands, had this type of money training while in high school? Just by a show of hands, anybody? Okay, we have one. And my hand is a full, but I'm gonna go ahead and say two. That is a crying shame. Don't you know that society wants us to stay uninformed? They want us to stay uninformed so the big banks can continue to be in those big bank buildings. And it's done on our money because we're not handling it properly, right? So you're gonna to learn today what to do, what not to do. I have a whole do's and don'ts checklist, but I also have a do's and don'ts checklist about what to eat and how to exercise. You think I'm doing it? Nope, but I'm working on it. So, but that's okay. You guys got my back, I got your back. Okay? That's okay. It's okay. We know we're here to be honest and trans transparent, right? To help each other out. So I'm going to start with this presentation. And my sister Autumn, I want to thank her for just helping me to drive. So today we're talking about budgeting one. So if you see a budgeting one, what does that mean? Entry level, correct. That means that there's a budgeting two and there's a budgeting three coming after that. I want to thank my media team, Kelton, my cousin Chauncey, my brother Lawrence. They're here because they, we do things as a family. When one goes out, they all come out. That's how we roll. And so this is my church family. Meet my biological family, my granddaughter, London. She's nine months old, but guess what? She is in store for a legacy transfer. So that's why she's here. She is in store for inheritance transfer. So we're talking about investing, and that is getting inspired by the time, value, money, understanding, retirement vehicles. So I'm not gonna talk long on it because that's a whole class by itself talking about retirement. So what I would suggest for you to do is write in your books or come and sign up on my planner of a one-on-one, -on -one, which is gonna be free to everybody in this room. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one half an hour with me and we'll talk about the things that you need. But I don't know what you need if you don't tell me, so you have to go to the raffle table and just fill out a little card and tell me what you need and you have a free half an hour one-on-one -on -one with me that I can help to navigate what your circumstances are. One more shout out before I go on. My sister Stella in the back, who is from Inglewood Park Cemetery, where all my property is, I own five properties there. And she helps me with that, so I wanna give her a shout out as well. 
I tell you, we're a family, and it's in the house. We just need to work together. People say we can't work together, but that's a lie. We can work together, and we will work together. So we're going to talk about spending, some of the tools to, to manage your money and build wealth and take control of large purchase planning. We're going to talk about credit, of course, and we're going to talk about the protection uh, protection with insurance. So laying the foundation. When you talk about wealth, people think of what? What do you think of when you hear the word wealth? You hear money, right? But what about the four the four types of wealth. Can anybody tell me what's another form of wealth? Real estate. So, wealth. Mm -hmm. Yes. In your packet, in your packet, see, I can tell you didn't go through your packet because it's right in there. What's the four types of wealth? Somebody tell me and holler it out. What's the four types of wealth? Nice and loud, Roxanne. Green, smart goals, savings plans, and spending plans. Perfect. And also want to consider status. People have a lot of status. They're very popular on social media. They're wealthy in that area. What about the people that are fit as a fiddle? Their body is cut, right? They look good in whatever they wear. That's a type of wealth, right? So what about time? I was telling my brother Lawrence, man, you are rich in time. You've got time. Most people can't even plan for the next five minutes because their calendar is so booked. So my brother is rich in wealth. And then you have finances, right? Some people don't have to worry about anything. They spend what they want, go where they want, right? But let me just tell you, the wealthy, they buy used cars, they have planners to help them with that. They're on a budget. They're doing things at a minimum. They're under the radar. I have about five millionaire friends. And I tell you, if I mix them in here, you wouldn't even know who they were. They wear very little jewelry. I think I wear inheritance jewelry and just want to give my parents and grandparents on it, so I wear their stuff, right? But they don't even wear jewelry, y'all. I'm just trying to tell you how the rich do it and the wealthy do it, okay? They don't wear brand clothes where we have to be just like Mike and just do it and Nike. And I was Adidas down yesterday. I don't have not one stop in Adidas. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, just trying to, I guess, be in the know, right? So we have to watch that. So we need to write in our books. There's a book, it's a budget book in your package. It's the little one, it's not the big one. And in there is how you're going to follow along. We can't hit everything, but we can, no, not in that one, in the small budget book, if you happen to have it. If you don't, we'll get you a copy of it. But this small little budget book is what we'll be talking from. If you don't have it, it's okay, we can always get you one. But the bottom line is we need to create a personal definition of work, well, excuse me, that connects with your life goals. So in other words, if you're trying to buy a car, or if you're trying to buy a house, or you're trying to retire, or you're trying to transfer your assets to the next generation, then those would be some of your life goals. So you list out your life goals, and you also want to lift out your dreams. Because if you don't plan your goals, you can fall off of your plan, right? You must put down your goals. And those goals could be smart goals. And we'll talk about that. Okay, so the rich, they make a lot of money, they have a lot of debt, they spend a lot on material objects, and they have low or negative net worth. And we'll talk about net worth. The wealthy, they save a lot of money, they live within their means, they spend on experiences, and they have a high net worth. So dreaming, we need to continue to dream. Joseph had dreams. The king thought it was so important to have his dreams interpreted 
We need to dream, y'all, and remember those dreams and keep those dreams and goals very, very close to your heart because it's part of planning. So as you're setting your goals, you're going to set short-term goals, immediate goals, and long-term goals. The short-term, less than a year, right? Immediate, one to five years, and then long-term, five years or more. So SMART goals. Have you heard of SMART goals before? Yeah. Okay, so make sure that when you're setting your goals, they're specific, right? What will I achieve, achieve and who will benefit? Why is it important? Measurable, how much, how many? Attainable, is this goal something I can actually reach? Relevant, is this something I really, really want? And then time-based, by what date must I have this goal done by? Very, very important. And then when you're talking about your goals, you're also going to put a monetary amount to it, right? We want to find out, and it could be approximate, but put down some, some kind of monetary amount. And why? It's going to be a part of your budget. It's going to be a part of your budget. In just a couple of minutes, Twyla is going to hand out a budget sheet so you can see exactly that community to come back again, not necessarily to do a red party, but to be each other's keeper, yeah. to be each other's accountability partner, mm -hmm. to say, hey, I think that we need a savings plan because you're overspending or whatever the case may be. Or you may be able to say, hey, I have an investment idea, sister. Can I just bounce that off of you? Would you like to go and have on this home that I found in Florida in a, a beautiful neighborhood and this loveliest house is selling for 50000 That was just three weeks ago, a conversation, a true conversation that I had. And guess what? I couldn't find any other investors. So the house is sold. Somebody else just flipped it and they're doing good. Timing is everything. I don't feel bad. There'll be another opportunity. No problem. But if you want to be have those conversations with me, Fill out the card, just let me know, invest it, okay? And we'll talk about it. How do you keep track of your money? Right now, do you have a checking account? Just a show of hands, anybody. How do you track your money? Roxanne. Um, well, I have checking accounts, savings accounts. I buy things somewhat of a budget. Okay, somewhat of a budget, all right. Tom, Tanya? A checking savings, I use check register. To document what I spend. Okay, um, very good. Twyla? Uh, I have checking savings, investment, high yield savings account, fees, um, physical, tangible, gold, silver, and copper. And I track everything in a spreadsheet. As you said, I'm an accountant, so it always ends up in a spreadsheet. Okay, very, very good. Did you guys hear that? She's tracking her expenses in a Excel spreadsheet, which works. I'm an Excel advanced user have been for years, that's how I pay my bills as an accountant, just to have that skill set. So I teach Excel, so any of you that really need to know Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Microsoft Suite, I'm your girl, I can teach those, I taught those at the colleges. It's great to have that skill, but guess what? Now, you don't even need Excel. You have Mint, you have Mint.com, and every expense that you put debit card with QuickBooks is on your phone, Pass it goes directly into your spreadsheet. Woo. I love it. How easy is that? When it's time to do your taxes, woo, all your spreadsheets just go into your tax form. I'm just loving technology. Some people say, well, I don't want them in my business. Guess what? They're already in there. <laughs> They're already in your business. You might as well use Mint or uh, uh, your spreadsheet or something to track your activity. Do you know every time you swipe, someone's tracking it, your bank or whoever? How many people in here reconcile their bank statement on a monthly basis besides me? Okay, not enough people are raising their hands. Not enough. Because guess what? I love the millennials. Crystal, close your eyes. But most of these millennials don't work quite as hard as we do. And they make a lot of banking errors. And a lot of your money is not being charged in the right place. I love Wells Fargo. I love Bank of America. I love the credit union. 
but you have to check and double check them what they're doing and what they're doing to make sure that it's accurate. Okay, so network, let's talk about network. You have to keep track of your will. Remember we talked about the four, the four types? Now I need somebody to pull out their hand out again. The four types of wealth in your hand out. My sister, she's got it right here. So what's the four types? Here, let me give her the mic. Social wealth, financial wealth, time wealth, and physical wealth. Okay, so those are the types. Social wealth. That means that if you're spending more time on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Chit Chat, TikTok, more time on there than you're spending, budgeting, tracking your expenses, ex investing, then we need to shift some time around. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that we need to make sure that it works for us, okay? Did you know that for every picture that we send with us at Disneyland, Universal Studios, the beach, there's probably 10 other people that are in financial disarray who love you to death and feel bad about not being able to live the life that you live. Have you thought about that? I haven't. I was just posted away. And then, not on Facebook, you don't see me posting too much on Facebook, but my email, and then someone said, Mr. your name. I can't live that life that you live. So my thing was, do I stop posting, or do I help them with their matters, their, their lifestyle, and their money, and get, help them to get a job so they can? But it convicted me, is what it did. So now, my quest is to help those that possibly can't help themselves to boost up their life and their lifestyle, help them to tithe, help them to get closer to the Lord, help them to be equipped to get jobs. So in addition to this budgeting workshop, over here you'll see a career book and changes for lifestyle changes that I'll start doing one-on-ones and job search and interviewing skills, I'll do those workshops. Also to help people to elevate themselves because right now in the job market, it's a whole nother animal. If your resume doesn't have keywords and terms in it, it gets kicked out automatically. You don't even get to the paper screen. If you cannot effectively communicate, if you have not taken my public speaking effective communication workshop, you probably need to because guess what? People are listening to your diction, how well you enunciate on the phone, even before you even get into the room. You need these types of skill sets before you sit down to negotiate. People take you serious. They take, they judge you by the way that you speak and by the way that you look and your body language. Am I right about it? Yes. So we need to be able to enunciate, pronunciate all of the words properly so that they can't identify and eliminate us, right? So my daughter, she was so funny, Latoya, she said, Mom, I'm, she's a teacher in Houston. Mom, I'm changing my name. Why are you changing your name, Latoya? Well, it's too ethnic. They know who I am before I come into the room. I said, so what are you saying to Toya? To just Toya. She said it could be anything. But it's true. People are perceiving you in a certain way before we ever get started. So guess what? We need to be three times, four times as best as the next competitor in everything that we do. And that is the truth. So let's talk about this net worth. We take our assets, everything that we own. So it could be the car, it could be your business, it could be what? Your cell phone, your jewelry, it could be your intellectual property, it could be your website, it could be your brand. All of these things are your assets. And then I'll also, as an accountant, throw in a little goodwill. I put a little money on the goodwill because I have a good reputation for my, my customers, right? So let's go back one step. Okay, perfect. Then we're going to take from the assets the life.
liabilities. So name some of the liabilities. Terry, what's the liability? Mortgages. Mortgages, liability. Tanya, what's another liability? Car. Car, no. Liability. Things that you owe. So we'll take our assets, things that we own, take away our liabilities, and that gives us our net worth. Cash flow. Cash flow is a little bit different. We take our income, everything that we're earning, take our savings away, right? Remember, we have that emergency one, our savings, right? We'll take out our spending account, and then we have the money remaining. Money remaining is also what? Disposable income. That's that money that we're going to be real careful with, right? So, in, so the network is a snapshot of your overall financial picture. Cash flow, it shows activity for a certain period of time. So Judy, I might be looking at my cash flow and saying, oh my gosh, I'm spending quite a bit of money in this season. I really need to be careful how I'm spending in this season. So we're going to watch it, right? So Twyla is going to help me by passing out a budget template. Now it's just some numbers in there. In our budget template, we may not have enough to pass around. What, what I figured out is that ink costs quite a bit of money. And so I could just make a whole bunch of copies. I made as much as I could for you guys today. Mr. Larry helped me out. But I want you to know that in your budgeting, as you're budgeting, there is a calculation in there. And what it is when you set up your budget, is you set it up saying, this is how much income that I have coming in, right? And that's for the year. And then you, you actually break it down by months. So this is what I have coming in for the year, breaking it out down by months, January through December. And then you put down what you think you'll spend a month, right? And you set up your budget template that way. Then as the months progress, you put down what you actually spent. That will show whether you were over or under. And if you have an emergency and you didn't plan for the emergency, what do you think that's going to do to your budget? It's going to blow it out of the water. So that next month you need to make some adjustments. You need to make some adjustments. So these, so this template that she's passing out to you is just showing you what a budget looks like. And I sit with you and we actually make the budget together. Right? With as many things as we can think of as income and as many things as we can think of as expenses. So when you do that, you'll be able to ballpark and come up with your net worth and your cash flow. If you go to a loan, small business loan, if you go to get a loan, guess what? They want to know what your net worth is, right? So they'll look at today's value. Let's say they're calculating your car. They'll go to Kelly's Blue Book and say, Angie, you know your Lexus you're driving? Well, you drove it off the lot, it just lost some value. But it's still a valuable car. You have more miles, we'll put an X amount on that, okay? So just understand that when you do make your purchases, make it so that it doesn't just look cute. It has some value too, some resale value. So cash flow, we want to watch out for negative cash flow because it's going to decrease your net worth. Positive cash flow, a lot of money coming in, you're spending less, that's going to increase your net worth. You with me? So tips for success, right? Be true to your values. What I tell you when I opened up, we want to do what? Dream, right? We want to dream. We want to write some goals. We want to make sure that they're smart goals. And the smart goals will be in this book, okay? We also want to make sure that we prioritize saving over spending, and we want to be goal-oriented. We want to live like that wealthy individual, not that individual that just says that they're rich. So before I go to the next slide, do we have any questions? 
anything that we need to talk about in this space? Any questions? Did everyone get a raffle ticket? Everybody got a raffle ticket? You see my daughter on the right? Because we need to give away all of these raffle gifts. We don't want to take them back home. And so you had a question, Ms. Shanasa? Okay, let me bring you the mic. Hold on one second. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Renee. Amazing, amazing um, presentation already. My question to you in terms of generating wealth, uh, I did hear you talk about, in, in terms of your investments on Bitcoin, uh, you did talk about the, you know, um, uh, investing in Wall Street and so forth in stocks and bonds, but I just want to know what your ideas are about that in terms of building wealth. So her question was, in terms of investing, how do I feel about Bitcoin? How do I feel about gold and silver? Well, for me, I have an investment team that I send people who have investment questions because it's very, very uh, customized. I send them to the investment team. Why? Because they live, eat, and breathe these things as they change daily, and they're very, very cyclical. So for me, I don't know enough about Bitcoins to advise anybody about Bitcoins at all. But I do know that gold has always been a good investment. And so I invest in gold. That's just me personally. And then my 401k and my IRAs, the stock market will drive that. But I have what I call the uh, type of insurance plans that no matter what the insurance does, the market does, it will always, or when I say always, always earn a certain amount of interest and, and, and grow. When the stock market crashes, I have a, a, a policy that if the stock market goes up, then it will make money. Stock mar market goes down, it'll go to a cap and just stay there. I will never, ever lose. So that's, that's what I do. You know, and that, that works for me. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so I have a whole team on the integrity financial team that this is all they do, live and breathe. I mean, I live and breathe financial, analytical work. I'm a business analyst, just finished a contract with the University of Washington. I do what I do. I'm an Excel whiz, an accountant just like Twyla. So it's what we do. I can help you in the space of making sure that you are educated in terms of how to manage your money and how to get your trust in place. I can help you with the wills, making sure your wills in place. Um, I can help you in that space. But in terms of investment, I'll send you to my team, the experts. Is that fair? Okay. So your takeaways. So you're, you're going to focus on building wealth over becoming rich, okay? You want to live your abundant life. So what did I tell you? You're going to go to viacharacter.org. You're going to do a personality test, which is going to tell you about you. Things you like to do, things you don't like to do. I wish somebody had told me that before I went out on my career path. Because I really thought I was going to be uh, a financial, excuse me, a fashion designer. Do you remember when I went to Fashion Institute? Yes, I do. Yeah, two, two it years. Paid, it paid off. <laughs> so I like fashion, but guess what? That is not my wheelhouse when it comes to making money. I got there and for two years after being there, I figured out real quick that one of the requirements for being a New York fashion designer is that you needed to know how to draw. I didn't know then. And I don't know now. So guess what? They said, Mr. you're going to have to go. I'm so sorry. This school is not for you. You need to go to an academic school, which I should have went to in the first place. If I had done a personality test, I would have found out that I can't draw. Okay? It would have been right there for me. I'm a numbers person. I'm a people person. I need to stay with the numbers and the people. The personality test would have identified that for me. So that's what I want for you.
So we're sec we're going to segue. You have a question, Miss What's the name? V I A V I A character dot org. And it will give you your top ten personality traits, things that are important to you. So we're gonna segue. Do you guys need a break or can I go on to credit? Can I go on? Okay. Okay. So we're gonna talk.